When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are on a Game of Thrones map, split into the major houses. You heard Cersei. When you play a Game of Thrones, you either win or you die. We're going to run a simulation. I'm going to run through every single major house. We're going to give each one a major trait that defines them. This is perfect for Game of Thrones. The way you can split things into kingdoms and put them to war with each other, it's literally exactly what would happen in Game of Thrones. Here we have our world laws. They're pretty standard. We got diplomacy, kingdom expansion, stealing borders, babies, hunger, old age on, peaceful animals, and that's pretty much it. For our kingdoms, I'm going to run through them real quick, explaining each one and the trait that we're going to use. You can skip to the battle if you want to get right into it. Here we go! So how Stark with the motto, Winter is Coming. These guys are pretty badass. They're like the main characters of the show. Each one of them is pretty unique. It's like Jon Snow, Arya, Ned Stark, all the, all the main characters, Rob. So we're going to give them Blessed. They're just freaking blessed. They're really good at everything. They're the rulers of the North. Our second kingdom is House Lannister. And these guys are deceitful. They're bloodthirsty. They're just killing people. Cersei's like the most evil person you'll ever know. Joffrey's also evil. Everyone's evil except for maybe like a couple of them. Their motto, or not official motto, but the thing they always say is a Lannister always pays his debts. So they're just extremely rich. Whole bunch of power. We're going to give them deceitful. We're going to give them deceitful. Our third house is high our third house is heist Ty our third house is heist our third house is house Tyrell and this house's motto is growing strong they're kind of like a side house they're nothing too major they're also pretty rich and have a lot of power we're gonna give them ambitious that's the trait that we're gonna give to house Tyrell our fourth house is house Aaron these guys sigil is a bird and their motto is as high as honor we're going to give them eagle-eyed. Every time they showed up, they were just always in some type of flying. They're just... Their kingdom's located on cliffs and very high up, altitude-wise. So we're going to give them eagle-eyed. Our fifth house is House Tully, whose motto is family, duty, honor. And I wasn't really sure what to give them. They were... Yeah, they, they didn't really have too much. They, they didn't have any major characters. They were loyal. There isn't really a loyal trait, so we're going to give them wise. Because it's wise to be loyal. Anyways, let's just throw wise on them and move on with it. Nothing unique, but it's like The sixth house that we have is House Baratheon, whose motto is ours is the fury. This house was a very battled house. They were veterans. They were good at war. They're the ones that beat the Targaryens. So we're going to give them all the veteran trait because they're good at war. So that's a good one to have. They're the ones that rule the kingdom once the show starts. The next house is House Martell, whose motto is unbowed, unbent, unbroken. And we're going to give the Martells attractive. The Martells are the sand people. They're like, they're like sand dune people. They're good at battle. They were kind of isolated, I would say, from the rest of the houses. But so I wasn't really sure what to give them. But we're going to give them attractive because every time they showed up, it was pretty, I don't know, they were just an attractive people. We'll see if they are, we'll see if they're able to stay isolated and just have babies and now beat the rest of the kingdoms that way. I think attractive people have a higher reproduction rate. We'll find out. Then we have the wildlings. All right, this, this isn't really a house. They're the people north of the wall who are the free people of the real north. They're, they're over here. They're north of the wall. They kind of just are doing their own thing, consider the, themselves the free folk. So we're, we'll give them the trait Flesh Eater. It just felt fitting to like wild people, right? They just... The next house is House Targaryen. This is Daenerys. This is all the dragons. These people are badass. They're kind of crazy. Anything to do with a dragon, every time dragons are involved, it's the Targaryen. So we're going to give them all a Dragon Slayer. And the last major house that we have is the Night's Watch with the motto Watchers of the Wall. They were right north of the Starks and they lived in like a little hut on the wall just kind of protecting themselves from all the, not the wildlings, but all the crazy shit happening on north up there. So we're going to give the Night's Watch tough. They have to deal with some tough stuff, so we're going to give them all tough. 
And those are our 10 kingdoms. We're going to put them all to war and see who comes out on top. If they take too long to go to war and stuff, we'll, we'll start forcing war. But kings are already dying. So it doesn't seem like we'll need to do too much. Movement down here won't be bad at all. These kingdoms are very tight. While the north up here, I feel like House Stark is going to have a massive advantage. Just like, look at the, yeah, just look how fast they're reproducing compared to everyone else. Already over a thousand. Already over a thousand and having the largest army. Reasonably, right? It's probably just a direct ratio. New king in the Night's Watch being crowned. The wildlings just chilling. They got, they don't really want to take over. It seems like a lot of uninhabitable space. How Stark moving into the north. Past the wall, gaining some advantage up here too. The starting year was about 1860. So it'll be a good reference point to see how long we need to go. Seems like House Stark getting a pretty big advantage right now. Just from having that land. So let's put them to war. Let's put everyone to war, actually. Since no one's really going to war yet. Alright, this should move a lot faster now. This is gonna move extremely fast. Let's see which kingdoms fall. Kings falling everywhere. Targaryens were destroyed over here. Didn't have any dragons to use in this simulation. House Stark taking over House Aaron. It's pretty good. House Stark having over 3,000 now. Baratheon at 1k. And if they're able to take over a lot, there you go. Baratheon coming out on top too. Reaching about 2k. Wildlings and the Starks going to battle up here. Just the top five houses now. It's House Lannister, Baratheon, and Martell. House Stark losing a lot of numbers. It's looking like they were going to win everything, but they're, they're going to battle on multiple sides, so kind of working. Martell hasn't moved much at all. They're pretty isolated. Let's check these guys out. We gave them the attractive trait when it started out, so uh, they were as isolated and just reproduced until their population allowed them. Alright, Bar Baratheon and Stark. About the same number. Baratheon with the original trait of Veteran, and Stark with the original trait of Blessed. Lannister had Deceitful, Martell with Attractive, and Wildlings with Flesh Eater. I think Flesh Eater might have been the best one out of them. If I was to pick, I think I would have chosen Flesh Eater. Or Veteran, actually. Because Ve Veteran is pretty good for battle as well. Baratheon and Stark, neck and neck still. Martell gaining a few people. Nothing too crazy. Wildlings almost being out of it. Stark's just pushing up. They're down to their top. Their final 60. Seems like they're not going to be able to do much. The free people of the real north are no longer free. Seems like they're part of the Starks at any moment now. Wildlings should fall any second now. Whoa! Why is this guy so big? Hold on. Likes to hold the door? That's definitely a reference to Game of Thrones. Wildlings still hanging on somehow. Baratheon kind of losing some to the tar- Oh, we just saw a swing of 400 there. To the Stark. Stark's- Yeah, Stark's taking a pretty big chunk. Someone declaring- The Starks and Baratheons making peace and Martells. Everyone making peace. Psych. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win. There is no peace in Game die. of Thrones. Wildlings, both the corners, when we started off, the Wildlings were all the way in the north, and the Martells were all the way in the south, are making it. The win condition for any of this, these houses is to join forces and go against the Starks. If the Lannisters and the Baratheons, in the show, these two houses do join. The Wildlings have fallen to the Starks, so it's just top four houses now. Martells should fall any second. The longer they fight each other... The worse it is for these three houses. Oh, one of the final battles happening. A ship has arrived. Overall population of the world, around 9k. House Baratheon dropping to under 1,000. About 800 right now. Lannister's at 2,000 and Martell's at 200. Stark's a little under 6,000. We're House Baratheon getting completely wiped out. So now just down to the top three. Up to the Lannisters. Lannisters versus Starks. This simulation went exactly kind of how the show went, which is hilarious. I love it. <laughs> oh, snap. Lannister's gaining a lot of ground. Yo, the Lannister's better not win this. Come on, Starks. Lannister's making a good comeback. They did exactly what they needed to. Take over House Baratheon and give the Starks some resistance. Oh, the king of House Stark is dead. Oh, snap. Lannister's able to kill the king. Usually when kings die, there's some type of uh, weird stuff. That, like, another king dies. Okay. House Martell was destroyed. Lannister's take over that. Get a good population advantage. And move into House Stark. Oh, 4K to 5K. This is getting interesting. Losing a little ground. Land is super important in this. So, 
based on the advancements, yeah, losing that much was pretty, pretty big swing. It's about 6.8k. Oh, losing another chunk of land. 6.8k to 2.5k. I don't count the Lannisters out yet. Cersei always be pulling some weird stuff. I'm sure the deceitful traits got some wild cards. Stark's reaching ground, touching base all the way to the southernmost point. It's just the final strip of land now for the Lannisters. The Starks losing those couple kings in that five year period got a little got a little scary. It could have turned the pop it was like what? 4k to 5k population that could have been the turning point but seems like the starks come out on top they try to make peace in the end you filthy lannisters get out of here with your peace tactics there is no peace in the game of thrones you know this they're the most ruthless house so we want to see them get wiped out completely come on send it in send it in starks mm. The North never forgets. They get their revenge. Congratulations to House Stark, the winner of Game of Thrones in the simulation.